Soweto is home to over one million people, and although life for some is improving, many still face problems of severe poverty and HIV AIDS. These problems mean some children need to be taken into care at places like Rima Children's Village. Am I getting too old for this, I ask myself. I'm just about holding my own. But former South African international Helma Makalele comes here often to coach. He sees football as a great way of improving young people's lives. Because I'm a soccer person, I think that is my skill that God gave me. So I felt that I need to share it with them, you know, just to give them uh, some few tricks, you know, that especially I would call it the guidelines. It's going to be easy for you to give a pass to your teammate. Once you give him a pass, he will have more time to think. Kick the, the ball out. Although Hellman teaches these deprived children invaluable soccer skills, his training sessions have a more important goal. There are a number of different skills that you, you can learn playing football. The more you are disciplined, the more you respect other people, the more you respect yourself, it will lead you to be what you want to be. Once you learn those skills, it empowers you, you know, you learn, you know, the, the, the effects of life, you become a better person. South Africa's national football team has just one white player, the formidable six-foot-six defender Matthew Booth, who's looking forward to playing in front of the home fans. It's going to be a football festival enjoyed by everybody, uh, no matter what colour you are or from what economic background you come from, everybody's going to enjoy it, and that's the beauty of, of the World Cup. Yeah. For most South Africans, it's not only football, but also their faith, which brings black and white together. It's quite funny sitting in the changing room and getting ready for a big game. 99% of our players are, are, are quite clearly religious. Wherever Matthew Booth goes, crowds often call out booze, which some foreign commentators have misinterpreted as booze because he's white. It is, however, an expression of endearment. It's not just his skill they admire, but also the fact that in playing with black footballers during apartheid, he was breaking the law. I grew up in a quite a liberal, open-minded family. Um, you know, we were not taught about uh, the color of, 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 of a person's uh, skin. There was no importance to it, um, which I'm uh, very grateful for, you know. and. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, it's, it's Christian-based uh, principles without a doubt, yeah. Our next song is sung in one of South Africa's 11 official languages, Zulu. It's called Waza Meliwami. 
come, my Saviour. Situated at the southern tip of Africa and sandwiched between the ocean and Table Mountain, Cape Town lies in one of the world's most stunning natural environments. England fans can look forward to a visit to the new Greenpoint Stadium here on the 18th of June. Holding the World Cup here in South Africa won't just leave a legacy of magnificent stadiums. A far more important legacy is the sense of hope and self-worth that football can bring. But is all the excitement about football something that's mostly only relevant to the male half of the population? Far from it. In Cape Town, there's a project aimed solely at girls. It's based in the township of Kailicha, an impoverished community of over 400,000 people on the outskirts of the city. Although it's only a few miles away from Cape Town's new stadium, it's a journey that takes you from the first to the third world. Soccer for Hope is a non-profit organization and basically what we do is we use soccer as a tool to teach underprivileged children life skills and HIV awareness and that and we focus specifically on girls. In South Africa, women under 20 are three times more likely to be HIV positive than men. Statistics that reflect their status in society. There's a lot of issues that a girl child faces. For instance, they would have more responsibilities in the homestead um, as compared to a boy child. For instance, preparing food when you've come back from school and helping with, with daily chores that a boy child wouldn't have to, to deal with. The reason we use sports and soccer specifically is to draw children, you need to have fun. The fundamentals of soccer is what we teach and we focus on the F-U-N, the fun. And we use that as a tool to link in the life skills. So for instance, if one of the children messes up in the training program, we'll teach them that, that when you mess up in life, you need to have self-esteem to be able to, to draw yourself from that problem or mistake in life and see the sense of humor in it, but as well, bring in the focus and laugh at your situation, but take steps to, to better that. 